All right, let's go over problems two through four on the fall 2011 exam one. Uh, most of these questions are multiple choice. There's a sample size problem at the end here. So this first question, uh, we have a medical study where they found that people who drink more than four cups of coffee a day have more heart attacks than people who drink less or no coffee. Uh, this led some doctors to suspect that coffee may be a contributing factor in, the co in causing heart attacks. However, more careful analysis of the data showed that heavy coffee drinkers tend to smoke more than other people. And we have to say what this is an example of. So first thing that we can notice here is that this is indeed an observational study. Uh, and the thing with our observational studies, uh, they're not experiments. So we can't have a placebo group and we can't have double blinding techniques. Those are experimental things. Um, we can also eliminate a completely randomized design. Um, let's hope that our designs aren't completely random and that they have some thought put behind them. Um, so lastly, that this leaves us confounding and response bias. And there's no reason to believe that people are going to um, give untruth or you know false or not truthful or not accurate responses about how much coffee they drink. Um, so I think that response bias is less an issue here and that confounding is the main issue here. And this is because we see this uh, cause and effect discussed here. Uh, here it talks about uh, causing heart attacks, how coffee may be a contributing factor. Um, and then there's a comparison between how coffee drinkers um, tend to smoke more than other people. So they're making a connection between coffee and smoking. Uh, and the main way you can identify these confounding variables here, whether someone smokes or not, is um, this whole idea of causation doesn't imply, or correlation doesn't imply causation. We see here that uh, co drinking coffee and heart attacks are definitely correlated, but that doesn't mean they necessarily cause it, and that's because of another factor that might be hidden there. And that is exactly a confounding variable. All right, so let's move on to number three. So number three uh, is about doctors, uh, charitable doctors. So researchers chose 60 communities at random and then chose some doctors at random in each community. So in total, they interviewed a little over 10,000 doctors. And then overall, 77.3% of the doctors in the study said that they had given some care free or at reduced rates because of the patient's financial need in the month before the interview. So I highlight in the study, because uh, Part A uses this information, for what the number 77.3% is. Um, two answers we can throw out right away, because uh, statistics are not numerical summaries for populations, and parameters are not numerical summaries for samples. It's the other way around. So one in four are the only reasonable choices here. And because the 77.3% is for those in the study, we, it's a statistic because it's for our sample of 10,881 doctors. Lastly, some doctors who did not give any charity care may say that they did. And here, that would mean that the study suffers from response bias as they're um, not responding truthfully. That's what a response bias is. It's when your respondents aren't giving you the real answers due to some cognitive issues. So it's either three or four. And because they, we state in the problem that some doctors who did not give any charity may say that they did, that means that the sample result is going to say that there are more people who gave charity than there actually were. So that means that number three is the correct answer here. So it's going to overestimate, overestimate what the true percent is. All right, finally, let's move on to number four. Okay. So we want to estimate uh, the proportion of Ann Arbor High School students that bring a laptop to school at a 99% confidence level with a margin of error at most 4%. Uh, so this is a sample size problem um, because we want to figure out how many students that we're going to need to select. So first, 99% 99 confident, 99 confidence level. We know uh, the very common Z star uh, for 
uh, 95 percent and that's uh, either 1.96 which it, or sometimes we just round to two. Uh, here though we're gonna have to use our tables to look up the Z star for 99 percent so if we use our table we'll see uh, looking at the infinite row on the T star table uh, this is 2.576. So thus, we'll need to use the sample size equation, which can be found on your formula card. So the sample size n is equal to our z star divided by 2 times m, the margin of error, squared. So we have both our unknowns here. We know our Z star uh, for 99%, which is 2.576, and our margin of error, which is 4% or 0 0.04. So make sure you do convert that to a decimal. So 2.576 divided by 2 times 0 0.04 squared. Before squaring, that number is about 32.2. And once you square that, you'll get 1036.84. But of course, we can't sample a fraction or a decimal of a person. So we want to make sure that we uh, get the margin of error at most 4%. And thus, we're always going to round this number up because 1036 is just not quite enough to get to that margin of error of 4%. If we want to get um, under 4%, we're going to need 1,037. Okay, and that's all for this page.